Memories. Is that Garth? Was that Garfield? Damn, I knew the movie sucked, but I didn't remember it being that bad. Holy shit. Is this Ricardo? I like this. This is a good video. Thick venom. It's no secret by now that the so-called triple A Wait, that had nothing to do with anything else? on socially charged gaming experiences. Huh? The unsustainably saturated live service marketplace that has given us such award-winning triumphs in excellence. Best value. Anthem, Fallout 76, and The Culling 2 has brought with it the expectation that we're not supposed to just enjoy and play video games on our own. No. And as for playing any of this shit offline... You're having a look. Fincher. We're supposed to enjoy. Look, I like playing online games. Like to be honest, I could never imagine myself playing uh, playing offline games. Uh, you know, this is 2019, and uh, you know, in my mind, there might only be two genders, but there are there is only one way of playing games, and that's online. All right, I like playing online games. I love online games. Dark Souls, I, I play Dark Souls with the invasions up online all the time, uh, off stream. I just can't do it on stream because there's hackers, that's all. Uh, I, I love online games. I always have. I've always been really passionate about them. They're what really gets me excited about video gaming nowadays, uh, is like the online interactions. With them with other people around the world constantly connected whether we like people or not people have been playing video games with and against each other for decades yes. of course the concept of multiplayer is nothing new but we're beyond simple multiplayer these days we're expected to interact okay. with each other on more casual albeit more pervasive and complex levels the That's rise right. of social media platforms like twitter and facebook means we're more connected than ever more exposed to each other's bullshit and video games wants a slice of that action. If you would let's just let's just look right here. Just I, I want to pause this. I'm gonna just go ahead and minimize this real quick. Let's see right here. Let's go over to here, and we'll look at the uh, was the system. How do you set up Twitter integration? I actually have no fucking idea how to set up Twitter integration. I have no fucking clue. I'm just thinking about that. Like, I've never even tried to do it. But, like, WoW did the same thing in fucking WoW, dude. Like, everybody wants to get people on social media talking about their games. They basically want to use people as advertisements. To ask Electronic Arts CEO Andrew Wilson about it, it's something we're all begging for. In a so-called candid interview with the uncannily robotic executive, Wilson justified his company's push toward more social experiences as something the market demands, and he pushes this angle hard. The word social comes up no less than nine times in the interview as Android Wilson deploys his narrative. Once you okay. get to the point where social interaction is really, really important, then you discover that network effect in the context of games is as important as it is for Facebook or Snapchat or Twitter or any of these what other the social grounds, he said. Once you come to terms with that, what you understand is that people will come together to consume this content together and they will want to stay and continue Am to I being assimilated right now? and fuel those relationships as part of that. The reality is that is going to mean games as service is going to be foundational to our industry because that is how you will fulfill the motivations the of fuck? players who have social interaction at the very core of why many of them play games for much uh -huh. of the time they play. Wilson is saying social networking is just as important in a video game as okay. it is on Facebook, which is one hell of a bold take. Yeah, because I really want to make sure that I'm networking with uh, Kyle, the 14 year old from Wisconsin who pisses Mountain Dew and uh, bleeds fucking G Fuel. 
Like, oh yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what I'm looking to do, right? I really want to interact with Kyle. Uh, I mean, these fucking things, like these social networks, it's very simple. They want people to go online and talk about their games, to use people's social media presences as a vehicle to advertise their fucking game. Like, that's what's going on, that's what it's about, that's why they care, alright? It's not about, oh, they want to bring people together. The only thing they want to bring together is people's wallets and, or their wallets and other people's money. That's the only thing they give a fuck about. Now, there seems to be no real evidence for his belief that it's that important. Outside of financial reasons, but we'll get to that. He just yeah. states it like it's a given, a fact, something we've all already accepted. The, now, and, and this is a wow stream. This is a, a wow, like, a, a wow, like, channel, whatever. So, like, a lot of us are actually friendly towards the idea of social interaction in games. But there are some games that you don't need social interaction for. For example, um, Sonic. I don't need to have a Twitter account connected to my Sonic account. All I need to do is go fast. That's it. Uh, there's a million other games like that too. You don't need a Doom. Yeah, Doom 1 and 2. Tetris. Well, you play against other people in Tetris. There are plenty of games that don't need to have social media integration built into them. Personally, I'd love to know who he asked to reach this conclusion. A conclusion yeah. he's already treating as something obvious, something irrefutable, something we've all yeah. got to acknowledge. I'd love to know which video game players are going around saying, I really love Fallout, but I wish it was more like Twitter. Actually, I'd love to meet anyone who wishes something was more like fucking Twitter. I've yeah. certainly never been asked, and frankly, if I were, I'd answer with a resounding fuck no. Fuck no, do I need exposure to more human beings when I decide to play a video game? If anything, the existence of Twitter and Facebook should be an argument for less social interaction in our escapist entertainment. Where the key word is, escape. I'd much rather yeah. get lost in my own solo experience after dealing with fucking people all day long. We've got- There's a lot of escapism that comes into video games, right? A lot of people like to play a video game to get the fuck away from other people. You know what I mean? It's like you sit there, this is how I've been at least. Like I'll sit there and I'm not gonna give a fuck. Like I can sit there, I, I can have an annoying day that pisses me off and I can sit down on WoW and I can take my anger out on my level 110 rogue on a level 60 character questing in Hellfire Peninsula and I pop him the fuck off and I feel better about myself. Maybe I do some world quests, maybe I achieve a small goal in the game, right? I do something that's going to uh, take my mind off of the bullshit that I've just had to endure. And these are good things. These are very good things. Uh, escapism is important. And he's right whenever you say that whenever you introduce these real life constructs into the video games, it makes the, uh, I, I guess like the escapism more transparent. Because whenever you have a million pop culture references and Twitter integration and, you know, live stream bonus items and then items in the game that just look like the logos from the different esports organizations that are competing on a professional level about the game, you're not playing a game on the same level as you were in, you know, like 2001, for example social interaction coming at our asses, and it's becoming more and more evident yep. through the prevalence of social networking and the horror it brings that the biggest mistake humanity ever made was getting to know itself better. That's true. I expect Wilson and game industry executives like him to increasingly lean on the idea that we, the people, demand more social interactions in our games. Yeah. In a recent interview, Ubisoft CEO Yves Jouimeau beamed about how tech advancements for game hardware offer more intelligent game worlds with deeper systems, the ability to play with more friends, and have more social interactions. Wahoo! That's not bad. Like, that's not bad at all. I, I think that, like, having, like, the social interactions and, like, interacting with people and everything, that's, that's good. Like, how is that bad? Uh, the, the issue, right, in my opinion, right, I don't know what, what his opinion is on it, we'll, we'll see, uh, but in my opinion, I, I don't like whenever you have these fucking games, and they're built around, like, real-life social systems, 
right? Like Twitter and Facebook and shit. Like social integration to video games is fine. But I, I do also know that I'm a bit of a, uh, you know, an anomaly. Many people like to play games solo by themselves without anybody else. They're complete. They like single player games. I'm not a person into that kind of stuff, but other people are. And I, I, I can, I guess I can respect that, right? By the way, can somebody invite Crack Monkey on Kel'Thuzad to a realm that has Rust Feather and or the Arachnid Harvester up? I'm trying to kill them on this character. Similar to the ways in which the industry pushed the whole single player games are dead bullshit, the industry is going to work overtime to sell this idea that video games must be in their own twist. Here's why they do that. Uh, th this is the this is the reason why they do that. I I, I want to say this. Uh, this is simple. Last three minutes? No, it hasn't been 20 minutes. It's been a little bit longer. Here's why they do it. Is because they want people to. Uh, it's like multiplayer games do better on Twitch. They do better on YouTube. And those that type of advertising is basically free advertising for those companies. So what they do is they want to make games that are the next Fortnite. Like every single every game developer out there right now is how can we make the next Fortnite? That's all they care about. Uh, that that's what they're all about because they want to be able to make money. And uh, that's why I think they're doing it so much like this. Uh, it, it's just because of this. Yeah, Mount God by the way. I'm going to get the mount here way social media platforms mm -hmm. and while there is and always will be plenty of room in the marketplace for social interaction multiplayer and live service games i fully believe there's a reason why cyborgs like andrew wilson are yelling yeah. the word social at any given opportunity i wonder why normalizing the idea that it's an expected feature of pretty much every mainstream game churned out the reason is of course money money more specifically, oh. money from so-called whales, the yep. customers prized by game makers for their willingness to spend large amounts of money on in-game purchases. Yep, it all comes down once again to flogging microtransactions. I would have never expected that. And if we take that. a look at a little talk given by Jussi Lakonen, Lakonen, Jussi, Jussi. Metal Gear? Anyway, if you take a look at this Ooh. talk, it'll show exactly why publishers are so interested in social networking. But the money curve on the on how you make revenue on free-to-play games, you got non-payers, you got moderate payers, you got heavy payers, and you got even what we call super whales. What makes these people... A super whale? Like, really? You're going to call them a super whale? I don't know why, I think that's fucking funny. Super whales. <laughs> and they don't even have like that, yeah, heavy payers. Like, they don't even have normal whales. There's just like heavy payers and then super whales. We need to watch this this one too. Uh, I, I don't know when we'll have time for it, but we'll have to watch it soon. People tick. And how do you attract them? The people who spend money. Yeah. How do whales find your game? What is engagement to these people? What makes them th tick? And how do they share? So, I, I, I wanted to stop right here and talk to you about the focus. This is a this is a seminar or some sort of like a uh, whatever the fuck right presentation about video games. And the focus on this is not how to attract a lot of players. It's not how to create a rewarding experience. It's how to attract super whales. That's it. That's what their focus is. That's what they care about. I'm going to try to complete the loop. How do these people find? How do they get stuck? And how do they bring more people into your game? How do they get stuck? Something tells me that wasn't the optimal choice of word, and yet it reveals <laughs> Getting so much. stuck in, in the game. In a prior video, we looked at how addiction-based gameplay is allowing the game industry to make money from vulnerable players. And we The best part about that, right, we watched this one, the best part about that is you have some fucking dumbass who spends $100 on the game, and then what are they going to do? Are they going to go play another game? No, because they just spent $100 on this one. So you get that sunk cost fallacy working in their fucking head, and then they start giving you more $100 because now they're invested. They want to put more money into it. Why not just take this game all the way rather than start off on a new game? Right? This is the same thing that I am with WoW, right? Like, I don't want to play another game because I'm just so fucking invested in WoW. Instead of wasting $100, I waste 100 hours.
looked at a gloating presentation given by a mobile studio CEO, Torolf Jernström, who explained in shocking and disgusting detail how in-game purchases psychologically trick people into spending money. Lakonan's talk, titled Getting Inside the Heads of F2P Players Who Spend 50 Bucks a Month, is less despicable in yep. comparison, but it's nonetheless an eye-opener in relation to this push for social networking yep. that we've seen in games. Getting inside their heads. You have to figure out what makes that dumb fucking super whale tick. What's gonna just get his dick hard whenever he fucking sends you another 50 bucks for the month, man? Like, that's what gaming's about now. It's not about having fun. It's not about enjoying yourself. I tagged the rust for it. Don't worry about it. It's not about anything. It's about getting those, like, what makes those super whales tick? That's what it's about, man. Yeah, what, how can I get somebody to buy a store mount every month? The talk broadens the concept of whales to differentiate between heavy spenders who spend around 10 bucks a month on a game and what Lakonan calls super whales, the most desirable sort who can be expected to spend upwards the of most, $50 a month. The most how desirable sort. Play into this when, because we're, in our survey, we're primarily interested in how the social affect uh, whales. And there's not a huge amount of difference when we think about this. Social features are important for everybody. We didn't see a huge differential when we add it into the heavy payers and the uh, super whales. But fundamentally, what's interesting is we think about whales being somehow psychology sick people who just play alone and they don't have any life. Yes. They're clearly more interested into yes. getting involved in, so in the social features. The social features help in retention. It reinforces that when you go into the game and start spending money, you want to engage with other people. This is really interesting. Which is why, see, th what he's saying is actually very true, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this. This is gonna be just, a, just a minute here, okay? This is another irrelevant personal anecdote to artificially extend a video length. So, the idea that I had with spitting on people for buying the store mounts works directly against what he's saying. The reason why super whales and whales and people that like to spend a lot of money on games want to show that off is because there's a positive social outcome for that. If you create a negative social outcome for somebody spending money on the game, they will have that, there will be one fewer thing that they can do and gain satisfaction out of their money being spent. So if you remove a reward, you can usually, sometimes depending on what it is, stop the behavior. So if you create a negative social consequence for something, it removes the satisfaction that a person gets for buying the item. Mission Boy, thank you very much for the 10 gifted community subs. I appreciate that very much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Making new in-game friends, in-game chatting, and responding to challenges, and these things are, uh, are really standing, uh, standing out. Yep, they so want to stand out. last slide, everybody was roughly equal on the social spectrum, slightly more for the super whales. Then, when we start really looking into specific features, the whales are really starting, the super whales are really starting, starting to stand apart. Here, the whale hunter okay. discusses that social networking is something whales of all stripes love. He also yep. tries to push back on the idea that whale hunting is problematic and targets the psychologically vulnerable because whales have friends, which isn't really a justification. Many problem gamblers and shopping addicts have friends. In fact, social media... I, I think what they're trying to say is that, like, people that are whales are just like Wall Street executives with too much money on their hands and so they don't mind spending $200 on some sort of a phone game, right? That's what they're trying to say, but uh, as usual, they're not really doing a very good job saying it. Uh, and it doesn't mean that those people don't gamble as well. Your addiction is itself a thing. Just being social doesn't mean you can't be unethically targeted by predatory monetization, but I digress. Wait, I got 20 gifted subs? Holy shit, thank you, man. Thank you very much, Mission Boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. Sorry, I missed that. I sure seems me to catch. Thank you, Ozzy Man, for the five. I don't watch videos, though. Or sorry, I don't watch uh, submitted videos. Mission Boy, thank you so much for the twenty subs, man. Sorry, I must have read that wrong. My apologies. Thank you so much. The point is, social interaction isn't so attractive to the industry because we're all necessarily demanding it, but it's sure as hell important to the industry because the whales seemingly like it. And it there it is. Mission Boy with the other 20 gifted community subs. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. I want you guys to listen to what he's saying here and then listen to this. 
because the whales are the ones that bring in the most money, they are the ones that the games are designed around. So whenever you look at a new video game and you see a monetization scheme, think about how does this bring in whales? Meaty Steve with the 21 gifted community subs. Thank you so much, man. Holy shit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Meaty Steve and Mission Boy. God damn, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, 21. One and up on them, man. Yeah, super whales, exactly. As always, I'd like to take a moment just to point out how dehumanizing I think the term whales is. I'm yeah. just surprised that the industry hasn't dropped the veil over its contempt and just started calling them cattle. Whether it be things like Clash of Clans, providing clan system where you can buddy up with other yep. people or with your existing friends, or maybe the new MOBA type of games that are coming along, they're all tapping into this feature which are about playing together or playing against somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and to yep. me, that's something if you're if you're working through watch a free-to-play game that really dry uh, you have to think about whales i think you need really need to start thinking about social as a key driver for these people if we look at the mobile gaming all the people that are at mission boy with the 20 more gifted community subs thank you so much mission boy holy shit thank you thank you thank you dude i appreciate that thank you thank you thank you dude yeah by the way good good pause here um so uh yeah the social interactions with like these different types of games and everything are what really keeps those people engaged. Uh, that's the same reason why people like posting screenshots on WoW whenever they get an item that's really special to them or like they get invincible or something like that. So whales get that same sense of satisfaction or fulfillment whenever they're able to post that they were able to buy something in the game. Right, there it is. Uh, thank you very much, Mission Boy, again. Thank you, thank you, super. Uh, people, um, people give subs to whales on Twitch. Right, the they're, is a they're, they're the saints of Twitch, okay? They give everybody else the ability to uh, to use my emotes. And uh, it's a true a true privilege to be able to uh, use Asmon L. You know, it's uh, really, really special. Truly amazing. Okay, let's go. Testing ground for monetization that makes its way to AAA video games as it seems to be, then yep. it's not hard to see why Android Wilson has such a massive fuck off boner for social gaming right now. This yep. talk where super whales were named as retained and driven Remind by social me to watch interaction that, like, was delivered in 2014. Not too okay. long before mainstream companies jumped aboard the live service bandwagon in so droves. Much. Games like Clash of Clans have long been an obsession for big budget game publishers mm -hmm. who see the mountains of cash they make and want to replicate that mm -hmm. financial decadence for themselves. In fact, it was in 2014 that I published a video titled The Unholy Trinity of Blind Greedy Bastards, where I discussed how game publishers only see and care about three games Call of Duty, Candy Crush, and of course, Clash of Clans. Oh, I learned right. this from talks with folks within the industry, and in the years since I published it, it's only become more and more clear that these games are indeed the most influential games of their time no, for we have all Fortnite the wrong too. reasons. But yeah. Incidentally, Clash of Clans is one of several games mentioned in a recent BBC report about kids being tricked into spending hundreds and thousands of pounds of their parents' money on video we game games, that one. specifically at children. And also, totally yep. incidentally, we're seeing ever more so-called triple a games doing the same thing especially fifa which is rated as suitable for kids aged three and up yet thanks to in-game gambling now needs more parental supervision than fucking doom ever did social yeah that's right so in doom your kid could see blood but in fifa he's gonna clean out your retirement retirement account i mean that's actually you know which one is worse I mean, it's it's really kind of hard to say. I, I mean, here's the thing with like FIFA and these other fucking games, dude, is that they're they want to target a casual audience. Nobody wants to really go after neckbeards because neckbeards see through this stuff. Neckbeards want to earn things. They care about this kind of stuff. They want to go for a casual audience that watches reality TV and listens to mainstream news. That, that, that's what they are going after. And I, I, I know this sounds like really, really conspiracy driven, but I almost feel like Blizzard has intentionally alienated the hardcore types of their games so they can push out more free to play features in a paid game and not have as many people complain about it. Uh, I know that's like super, super like, I don't know, like, like tinfoil hat, but that's the way that I see things, okay? 
Social networking also brings with it social pressure. For many years, people have argued microtransactions and loot boxes are okay if the items are just cosmetic. And I've no, pushed back that, against that defense the yep. whole time. There Cosmetics are particularly insidious yeah. because they create a haves and have-nots economy yep. where people are pressured into spending to keep up with their friends. Quite Think about this. What really is the difference between a, like a Lamborghini and a Toyota Corolla? It's basically cosmetic. I mean, really, it's cosmetic. Like, you can't drive 200 miles an hour in a Lamborghini. You have to obey the traffic laws. Like, no, no, really, think about it. Like, functionally, it's cosmetic. Like, yes, obviously, Lamborghini can go faster and, you know, everything like that. But you still have to obey the traffic laws. You still can't do all kinds of crazy shit that the Lamborghini's, like, created to do. Like, you don't have to? Yeah, you do. Not for Germans. Yeah, exactly. Track days. You, you, you bring it to track? My God. Okay. Well, just take any other car. A Corvette. Think about a Porsche. Lamborghini is an extreme example. The expensive cars that people buy are mostly to show status. Like, are, are we really going to debate the fact that people buy expensive cars to show off social status? Are you guys really thinking that doesn't happen? They're doing it for a cosmetic reason. Cosmetics drive everything. Why do you think, oh, what, uh, you buy a Gucci handbag for $1,700? Is it really that much better than a normal handbag at Target? No, but it shows other people that you're better than they are because you can buy Gucci and they can't. It's cosmetic. It, it, functionally, it's all cosmetic. A few people called me an idiot for arguing this yep. back in the day. Yep. But now we're in an age where kids at school are being bullied for not having any premium skins in Fortnite. Where default... Imagine kids bullying each other for who can spend the most money on fake products you don't even own on a for-profit corporation. Like, if I was a gaming executive, holy fuck, dude, I would dream of that. Imagine, like, you know, a completely, like, organic social pressure to give you money. That's beautiful. ...has become a derogatory term for those who don't spend on in-game items. Yep. And all this time, men like Toril Fjernström were explicitly instructing developers on how to use peer pressure to their financial advantage. We are herd animals. We tend to do what all, all of the others do. Yep. Uh, you all sit quiet listening to me because that's what all, all of the other guys do, do no, here. Thanks for fun. It's so, obvious. Uh, Especially when people are similar to our, to us. We've seen this before. This means that uh, you should have uh, the socially accepted way of behaving in your game should be paying. You True. Want to tell pe pe people, for instance, their c when a clan member of theirs spend IAP money, you want the whole clan to know. Because remember, remember what we did whenever I, I said this the first time. Uh, let's see, Sizzets, thank you very much for resubscribing. Rolly Rod, Skipfoot, HD, uh, gotcha. Thanks for the $3, man. Dangerous part of monetization that targets people with addictive tendencies. Unfortunately, whales are not just rich people. I know people that are not well off that are born 5K on a mobile game. They have remorse, similar to gambling loss. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the same thing on Twitch. Everybody does this. You want, in order to get people to pay more money, you create some sort of like a social like uh, advantage they have for doing that. I mean, like, obviously, it just, it just makes sense. I guess it's the other one over there. Just a second. Yeah, it's just common sense. 8.2.5 uh, PTR. We'll look at the patch notes after this, okay? Let me just focus on this right now, though. Then that becomes the socially acceptable way of behaving. Yep. Uh, you by absolutely do not want to tell them that the majority of people in your game never spend money. No. That's poison. Never tell them that. Yeah, Everybody in this chat is subbed. Now. Of course, the ability for social interaction to coax money out of people is a fairly old concept. It's how some of the most evil names in the game industry got their start. In 2009, 10 years ago, Farmville arrived to ruin the world. A seductive... Sorry, guys. I just want to have a quick midlife crisis realizing 2009 was 10 years ago. better times 2009 wasn't even a good year for me it was a bad year the only good thing about 2009 was my guild getting back together and wow 2009 fucking sucked 2010 was badass though
Effectively addictive farm management sim, much of what microtransaction fueled games are known for were popularised, maybe not invented, but entirely popularised by Zynga's Facebook-based agriculture map. Premium currencies, frustrating wait periods on activities, yep. purchasable items. It was a classic free-to-play structure that would mutate into the fucked up addiction-based economies that now rake in billions and billions of dollars for companies like EA and Activision. And the good part about Farmville is that it targeted people that weren't used to the different mecha uh, like mechanisms and mechanics that video games usually have. So Farmville did a really good job at getting people that weren't gamers involved and addicted to the game. Because it's like kind of like Animal Crossing or whatever. It gets old people. It gets soccer moms. It gets the non-traditional gamers invested and addicted to the game. And that's where you really make the most money. Because they haven't been fucked over a million times. So they're willing to just do whatever the hell. You know what I mean? That's what, it's, uh, that, that, that's what makes Farmville so special. And of course, Farmville was inherently social in its structure, being housed yep. most famously on Facebook, and utilizing Facebook's own features to spread knowledge of the game to everyone yep. on the network. Players were encouraged to spam their friends with requests oh, and would gain rewards for helping each other oh, out. God, it kept dude. people playing, it had them keeping that. up with each other, and naturally, that, it made That's a so shit bad. ton of cash in the process. Yep. And its peak, Farmville boasted 83.76 million active users a month and while its popularity declined sharply after 2011 the legacy it left behind the lessons it taught the industry are stronger than ever its addictive gameplay loop of repetitive busy work and chores nice. has been replicated thousands of times over in the intervening decade taken to new peaks of audacity with mindlessly cyclical premium games like anthem which unmistakably share yep. huge amounts of dna with farmville many if not most of the these modern live service games are just Farmville writ large. They might have combat this added in, one. more shit to five. do, and a bit of narrative draped around it, but the philosophy is the same. When microtransactions came to Dead Space 3, Visceral's John Calhoun notoriously tried to justify them by saying mobile gamers expected them, so they were added to the distinctly non-mobile game. There's a lot of players out there, especially players coming from mobile games, who are accustomed to microtransactions, Calhoun. They're used to getting fucked in the ass, so why aren't you like everybody else? Just get used to it. Told CVG. They're like, I need this now! I want this now! They need instant gratification. So we included that option in order to attract those players so that if they're 5,000 tungsten short of this upgrade, they can have it. Ironically, as we all know, EA CEO Android Wilson needs tungsten to live. Jesus At the time, Christ. this statement from an EA thrall wow. was mocked and laughed at. Why on earth would you put something in there for mobile players who are called mobile players? because they play on fucking mobile systems. Looking back, however... I don't even care that they say this. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Do you know what I do care about, though? Is whenever you have these fucking people, these corporate defenders, the Activision Defense Force that comes out and says and rationalizes all of these different terrible fucking things these games do, and they're defending the companies. Like, the blind fanboys are a thousand times worse than the actual people that are doing it, because the, the people that are doing it, I know why they're doing it, to make money, yeah, duh. But why the fuck is Bill, the Facebook idiot that f the live streams on Facebook for six viewers, complaining because somebody else doesn't want to buy a microtransaction? You don't even have stock in the company. You don't give a fuck. But you're somehow defending this. And that's what I really don't fucking like, is people that are defending this stuff, even though they get nothing out of it, right? Because at least the people that are doing it are defending it because they make money off of it. It's like they're defending getting fucked in the ass and they're saying, hey, try this. It's great and seeing how insidiously woven into the fabric of the market microtransactions have become, what Calhoun says now takes on a darker tone. It was a portent of things to come, as well as a candid glimpse into what these executives were thinking. Because in the context of today's market, perhaps what he said wasn't all that stupid. 
I mean, they got what they wanted, didn't they? They wanted to emulate the avaricious economies of mobile games where knee-jerk purchases, addictive spending, and social pressure make billions. So well, if you're avaricious, you go to, what is it, the fourth or the third circle of hell? Hopefully the developers will go even farther than that. We'll see. Oh, they did. They did copy these things. You wouldn't see them be that blunt about it these days, but back then, what Calhoun said was a bit of honesty. They were just copying the successful shit they saw in mobile games to make money. Yeah, Naturally, duh. this honesty is still Fucking dressed duh. up in a bunch of insincere bullshit, but the nucleus of truth is plain as day. Calhoun, way back in 2013, the year of Luigi, outlined exactly, exactly, how they expected to make money by frustrating players and exploiting their frayed patience. I need this now. There it is. There it fucking is. Right there. Intentionally creating roadblocks that microtransactions allow you to bypass. That is the way that fucking games work nowadays. Every fucking game has this shit. You have a roadblock and it's like, oh wow, well you can't fucking do this, but if you spend the money, now you can do it. Think about the fucking level boost. What did they do after the level boost? They made leveling take longer. They do this shit fucking everywhere. Why is it? Because there's a profit incentive of making it happen. This is a problem. You don't open this door because then people are going to walk through it. They should have never fucking added this shit into the game in the first place. I can't criticize them for doing it now because they're doing it to make the shareholders happy. The problem is the fact that they opened the door in the first place because it's just going to get worse and worse. The thing with the convenience, pay for convenience features is it creates a profit incentive to make the game without those features inconvenient. I am so fucking sick of this shit, dude. It happens in WoW. It happens in WoW, and it's a paid game. You pay a sub for it, it still happens. What the fuck? Can somebody invite me to roll Rust Feathers up? I want this now, he says. I need this now. I want this now. Yep. I shouldn't have laughed at that mobile player's line back in 2013. Yep. Because right now, in 2019, it's not a joke. It's just the way things are. It's and certainly not funny. And while this is going on, we have mobile game executives delivering their little presentations about how you should trick players into spending for instant gratification. Yep. How peer pressure should be used to make spending the socially acceptable... This guy loves store mounts right here. This guy fucking loves it. It's his favorite thing. His favorite mount? Guess what his favorite mount is? Hogris. Like, he loves that mount so much. Norm and how these super whales love social interactivity more than anyone else. Just like when the game industry told you that you don't like linear, story-driven, single-player games, the game industry wants to tell you that you want all your games to be social. That yep. it's as important to your experience in a game as it is to Twitter. Facebook and Snapchat, and it's a crock of shit. So True! I'll be right back. I need to take a piss. Whenever I get back, I'm gonna get this fucking mount. Just a second. Social gaming has its place, but its mass adoption by the AAA game industry is a fucking scam. A long con. Yet another way, yep. on top of the by now absurd number of ways in which video game publishers plan to swindle, 
trick and seduce cash out of you. And just to reiterate the most important aspect, I don't like people. Who fucking does? As we firmly established over the years, game publishers don't produce things simply because people want them. Obviously they do do things there's a market for, but the sole reason, the primary reason, is not because people want stuff. No. If they produced things just because people wanted them, there wouldn't be so many Kickstarters for things people want. No, no, no. They do things because they yep. sense an opportunity to make extreme That's a good way to look at it. Money. Not just a good amount of money, a moderate amount of money, even an impressive amount of money. As we have talked about for many years on this show, game publishers don't just want money, they want all, all the of the money in the world. Hey, That's why we true. can't just have whales anymore for these people. They don't just have whales, they have their heavy spenders and their super whales. Yeah, they've been, yeah, that's actually really funny. They just keep wanting more. Well, we don't want whales anymore. We want super whales. What are they going to want after that? Fucking Godzilla? I don't know. This is insane. Because they've hit the limit, I guess, on just focusing on all of the whales. Now they need to find out how to finally tune themselves to get their psychological Omega whales. people who are even more willing to spend money than the people who are already yeah. willing to spend loads of money. It, there is no end to what they do. There is no. no limit to what they want. That's why monetization has gotten worse and worse and worse. And I've asked on this show before, where does it end? Where does it end when we have a game coming it doesn't. out and we have a game with multiple deluxe end. editions, silver editions, gold editions, half a dozen different collectors. The Best Buy edition, the pre-order edition, the pre-order at Best Buy edition, the EB Games edition, the Walmart edition, the Walmart bundle pack edition with the console that also allows you to access a certain character that's only accessible by buying it through Walmart. There's the Amazon edition, the Amazon Prime edition, the Amazon Prime rewards if you buy the game with Amazon Prime. There's Eight of six different consoles. Yeah, I mean, this is the intellectual edition. Well, that edition is not buying the game at all. But listen, this is crazy. There's too many fucking editions. Editions, microtransactions, season passes, uh, sponsored tie-ins with energy drinks, and of course, loot boxes as an evolution of the microtransactions because simply making perpetual money off people wasn't enough. While multiplayer and social networking even in games does have a place. It's becoming quite clear that these things are mass adopted not because they have a place, but because they can be used to displace what video games are in order to trick and swindle more and more money out of people. This whole social networking approach to video games, while not uh, uh, widely adopted, while not so deeply baked into games yet, uh, it's something I think is coming. It's something these publishers definitely are keeping their eye on. When you have Andrew Wilson saying that social networking is just as important in games as it is on actual social media platforms. Well, it's certainly more important than gameplay to them. That's true. You can sort of smell where the wind is blowing. And yes, I meant to say smell which way the wind is blowing because the moment the wind blows in your direction, you can just pick up the hint of shit from the horizon because that's what big massive game publishers are doing right now. Shit. Utter, outright shit. Anyway, thank you to the people in Alabama who came out, Jimquisition fans who came out to the Piedmont show in Alabama where Sterling appeared for Pro South Wrestling. If you're in Pittsburgh, August 3rd at the Rise Stronghold. Why not come and check it out? It'll probably maybe be good. And hey. you can all, whether you're That's there as or committal not, as me. Thank God for me. Wouldn't that be nice for you, hmm? Goddamn sick venom. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Okay, so I like the video. Obviously, I like the video. 
Everybody likes to watch the Nixium new video. I know Nixium made a woodcutting video. I probably want to watch at some point. But we did have something Red Bull Limit Drama Time. No, man. We got to I got to blue ball you again, bro. Because we got the 8.25 fucking patch notes that literally just came out. I want to read that shit, man.